this is our baby girl. She just turned one, but she hasn't started walking on her own yet. I thought it'd be really special to make some shoes for her, my baby, baby girl before she takes her first steps. She's gonna do it any day. She's not walking yet without holding onto a hand. Let's see if I can make her some cool little leather shoes that she could take her first steps in. <laughs> All right, so the kids are in bed and I'm in the shop and I'm gonna get busy here. So I need to pick out some leather. I need to make a pattern. I've never made shoes or booties before. So these are some that my daughter has. It's not like she's running around barefoot all the time, um, but I think it'd be really cool to have her take her first steps in shoes that I make. So I'm gonna make a pattern from scratch, kind of using these as inspiration, and we'll go through that together. We'll kind of wing it, more or less. I wanna do it tonight because she's close to starting to walk, and I'd love to make these before she actually starts walking. Okay, so let's pick out some leather first of all. I need it to be soft, soft against the skin. I want her to be able to wear socks or no socks and still have it be nice and soft on the inside. It's also gotta be soft tempered enough to be able to be flipped right side out because we'll build these inside out and at the very end, just like a tote bag, we'll flip it right side out so that the seams turn to the inside. This is one that I had in mind. It's a five ounce leather. It's really nice and soft to the touch. It's a little bit thicker than some of the other leather that I've seen. Uh, for other little baby booties and things like that. But I think if we sky the edges where the seams meet and do a nice job at that, it will keep the bulk down and also make it a lot easier to flip right side out. So I think we'll stick with this one and let's make a pattern. All right, that was pretty fun. So I just wrapped tape all around this, as you saw. I'm gonna peel this off carefully and just kind of see what we've got. All right, it's a little bit rough, but we'll kind of clean up the top and make sure it looks good before we go. So that's a pretty cool way to take a 3D thing, use some tape, and then make a 2D pattern. So as this kind of lays flat, that's how we'll cut out our leather, more or less. All right, so 10 minutes later or so, we have something that actually kind of is starting to look like a little baby shoe. So now we, we need to make a sole uh, for the bottom. And then after that, as we start to make the pattern, we don't want to forget about a seam allowance. A seam allowance is where the leather comes together, you're going to, going to lose a little bit. Everywhere I've taped is just the leather that's showing, leather that's showing on the outside here. Um, but what's tucked in and sewn together, there's going to be a little extra leather that we have to account for. That's called the seam allowance. So we'll probably add three sixteenths of an inch or, or a quarter of an inch. Let's see, what is that? Six millimeters for those of you in the rest of the world. So we'll uh, go ahead and do the bottom. We'll add the seam allowance. We'll lay it out flat on some paper and we'll add some little details to make them kind of pretty for her. So that's pretty cool. Since this was all uh, made out of tape, I was able to actually assemble it and it actually kind of looks like a baby shoe. So I'm gonna disassemble it. Actually, before I disassemble it, maybe I'll sort of trim around the top get an idea of kind of how the, the upper portion of the shoe is gonna be, the cut of it. We're also gonna have some elastic in there to kind of hold the heel piece to the front piece and just kind of hold them together so it's easy to open up and slip a foot in, but then it's gonna come back together and be pretty secure. Um, I didn't have any like narrow uh, elastic around. This is like one inch wide, probably be a lot beefier than um, what I would be after if I were to actually be able to run to the store, but I don't uh, have access to the store tonight. So I'm gonna actually just take this and trim it down into some like quarter inch strips. But I'll use this old file folder and take my tape now and just lay it out right on the onto the file folder and it'll kind of stick down and that'll give, give something a little bit more substantial behind it that we can kind of trace around, add the seam allowance and cut it out. So I used my scratch all to mark all the pieces on the piece of leather here. So I'll just kind of do what I call block cutting. I learned that from a sheath maker named Paul Long. Cut out the main chunk of leather here, just so it's a little bit easier to manage. Okay, we've got all the parts cut out. What we'll do next is go to the skiving machine, which is that machine over there. Uh, you can skive by hand. Skiving is thinning down the edge of the leather or, or thinning down any portion of the leather, but when we skive the seams, we're gonna skive down just the edges that are, that are going to be sewn together. 
and what that does is reduce the bulk in the seam. Run over to the skiver and kind of get it set up. We'll get it dialed in with some scrap leather. I'll show you how I do that. So this is an NP4 skiving machine. It's a bell skiver. They call it a bell skiver because it has a bell knife here. Super sharp. I have a scar uh, on my finger because I touched it. Did not respect the, the knife. It's very sharp and it can be resharpened. There's a sharpening stone inside the machine when it needs it. This is from Tandy Leather. I'm really thankful to be working with Tandy. They helped me get this into the shop so that I can use it on these projects and show you how it works. So really thankful to them for that. So right now what I want to do is adjust the depth of the skive that, so that I can choose the thickness that I want it to end up at as well as the width of the skive so I can determine how much, uh, how far in from the edge I want it to skive. So we'll do that now. Uh, I want to, I, since we are going to have about a quarter inch seam allowance, I want it to skive in a little bit past a quarter inch. So maybe we'll shoot for three eighths of an inch or so for the width of the skive. So that worked out really well. I'm, I'm really happy with how that skive came out. So that's about half the thickness or even a little bit less than half the thickness. Eventually it's gonna be flipped right side out like this. So that's where the, the, the reduction in the bulk is, is really nice. And the seam that's turned on the inside just becomes quite thin and uh, doesn't leave a whole lot of bulk inside of the shoe. Okay, well I didn't make it through last night. I went to bed, I called it a night about 12.30. And uh, here I am back in the shop about 24 hours later. So I went to work today, got everybody fed and back in bed tonight. So here we are, everything's just where we left it. Um, all skived and cut out. All we need to do now, hopefully it goes well, is to put it all together and sew it on the sewing machine. Well, that didn't really go as well as I hoped on this machine. This does not have the, a walking foot or a compound feed mechanism to really pull the leather through. It didn't feed as consistently as I wanted, so I think I'll just go over to this machine. The thread's a little thick for this, but I think it'll work just fine. I got that nice top stitch on the, uh, on the top of the shoe that's gonna be visible on this machine with that finer thread, so I like the look of that, but for the, the seams, we'll just go to this big machine and get her done. Ran out of bobbin thread. Been a while since I did that. All right, well, believe it or not, it's midnight again. So I need to flip these inside out. We'll see how that goes. I flipped quite a few uh, bags inside out. This is the smallest thing I will have ever tried to flip inside out. So let's see how it goes. So this has been a legitimate 10 minute struggle here. I guess I'm just happy I didn't use any leather that's uh, thicker than this. Your shoe. What do you think? Well, oh, we got them done. Let's see if they fit. Come and see me. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Come on, Cinderella. Here's my hand. 
Oh, good oh, job. Good. Well, that was a really fun project. I think they uh, are going to fit for a couple months anyway. I think she will take her first steps in them, so that will be pretty cool. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next video.